Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest news, trends, and innovations from thought leaders from within the digital infrastructure space. And we are coming at you live. That's right, Gori. We are live right now from okay. DCD Connect in beautiful New York City, New York, at the DCD Connect uh, conference. And uh, the thought leader to my right is Gori Pathar. Gori is the chief commercial officer at GPC Infrastructure. Gori, welcome to JSA TV. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, did I get the name correctly? You know what? I felt real good about it. That was absolutely perfect. Yes, yes yeah. absolutely perfect. How's the show going for you? I have been amazed at the energy, um, the level of conversation, the thought, and uh, just how much uh, how much just buzz there is Ton of and it. excitement. Right? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a fun time to be here and to be a participant in this industry. We're yeah. thrilled to be here. And all of these participants uh, really have their kind of like niche play within within the ecosystem. Yeah. And, and you're no different. For our viewers that don't already know, why don't you talk to them a little bit about GPC infrastructure? Absolutely. So GPC infrastructure provides on-site energy as a service to the data center. We do this by owning and operating natural gas generation, and we provide power to the data center under data center under a long-term power purchase agreement um, we are experts in energy um, and we are backed by energy private equity and we are here to be a long-term pro solutions provider for power uh -huh. and bring that as an easy button to the data center industry so uh, I love the easy button uh, yeah. analogy very very much as a, as a marketer I think it's perfect yep. um, but um, okay, so energy. A lot of people are talking about energy yep. uh, as it relates because with, with without it, everything, all of the all of the cool stuff, all of yep. the real sexy stuff that we talk about in the in the industry, that it doesn't happen right. without energy. And yep. one of the things that um, you all are doing is that on-site power generation. Talk yes. to us a little bit about that. Well. On-site power generation really puts the control back in the hands of the data center. Mm -hmm. So the data center now has the option to decouple from utility timelines. They can grow at the pace of the ramp use for power mm -hmm. for their tenants, mm -hmm. right? They can be modular in how they can um, access power and grow. And more than that, they have a lot of optionality in trying to bring a sustainable angle to that power consumption as well. And I know for a lot of, you know, a lot of the discussion here has been, is natural gas sustainable? Can uh -huh. this be a sustainable uh -huh. option? And and we believe that not only can natural gas be sustainable, but it can be responsible. And it gives a lot of flexibility that flexibility to the data yeah. center and how they plan and grow from a power perspective. I, I'll tell you this, as the um, as the, the publishers and creators of the Greener Data yeah. um, uh, uh, books, uh, the sustainability uh, angle is something that we are all very, very passionate about. Yeah. Um, and it does sound like we might share some of the same passions with regard to yeah, uh, with uh, energy consumption and, yes. and uh, sustainability. Yeah. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Natural gas is an enablement uh, tool for making sure more renewables stay on the grid. Mm -hmm. Natural gas power generation is honestly the best load following fuel that we have. Um, a lot of the uh, demands of the data center industry are allowing coal to stay on the grid a lot longer, right? Uh -huh. And coal to gas switching has been the biggest contributor to emissions reductions uh -huh. that we've seen in the last decade. So by having more natural gas on the grid, we're not only um, allowing coal facilities to be retired, reducing mm -hmm. our emissions, but it also allows more renewables to be on the grid and operate and run. And from a data center's center perspective specifically, um, on-site generation with natural gas gives you the option for waste heat recovery. We believe if you're going to use natural gas and you're going to have thermal energy, Gloria, I couldn't make wait it, to talk about this because I'm fascinated most, by, by this. Yeah. yeah, make it the most uh, efficient option you can, right? Yeah. Make it the most efficient generation and get every ounce of energy from those MMBTUs that you possibly can. So is is the is the, the heat reclamation, is that like, is that a reality today? Yeah. Absolutely. There's industries like refiners, pulp and paper mills that have standardized the use of waste heat recovery from power generation and re reusing that for other internal applications. And so from a data center perspective, there's a option we talk about with our customers, which 
you can take a 35% efficient system, which is a simple cycle generator, or 60% efficient system, which is a combined cycle generator, which is using some of that waste heat and running it through a steam turbine. But we can put it through an absorption chiller and make it an 85% efficient system and provide a cooling stream to the data center, a chilled water loop effectively, in addition to power, right? So we can basically be 85% efficient. We can make our uh, emissions profile over 40% less uh, em- carbon intensive relative to the grid. And we can provide not just energy in the form of power and megawatt hours to the data center, but we can also provide a chilled water loop or a cooling stream to the data center that they can use to then offset the uh, electric chiller usage of it, that's inside the data center. They can offer more compute yeah. to their end users um, and they can have a uh, CapEx and OpEx savings by effectively using a waste stream that is already coming from an on-site generation system, right? So having access to on-site generation gives this option to the data center that doesn't necessarily exist if you just have uh, reliance on on the grid, which is obviously a necessary and critical component. But I say, you know, why not have more options in yeah. how you consume power. And if you're using on-site generation, make it the most efficient you can. Gori, I, we're going to need to do this again. Okay. <laughs> because I, I, we can, I, I feel like we could spend the entire afternoon just, just, ta- talking, just about talking about yeah, that. Absolutely. But unfortunately, we don't have an entire afternoon. Oh, okay. But uh, what I would like to do is to leave our, our viewers uh, with one final thought from okay. you. And that is if they are considering on-site power generation, yeah. uh, but don't know where to start or, or where to begin. How does that happen? Yeah. I mean, there's a couple of big questions to answer, right? The first is, if you decided to get natural gas and you want it to be on site, you've got to think about, can I get the gas? And number two, can I get the air permit? So from a gas supply perspective, you know, we have many, many molecules that we produce. The U.S. produces quarter of the global gas in the world. Um, There's highly reliable pipeline networks to move the gas where it needs to be consumed, from interstate pipelines to intrastate pipelines to local distribution networks. So for a site that's thinking about gas, you need to think about the proximity to the pipe, right? Can you access the pipe? How far away is it? You need to think about whether that pipe has capacity available. Can you get farm transportation or interruptible transportation to move the gas? Then you need to think about, can I get the gas itself? And that supply can come from a producer or from a marketer, right? So there's kind of those three components. Then there's ways to think about, can I manage my volume volatility? If there's a ramp, maybe you want to manage that through a contract that allows you to stage into the supply. Maybe you want to have a reliability solution where there's storage is a component of this and you can access storage to be able to access the gas. And then you may have also price volatility you want to manage. So there's multiple considerations and a portfolio approach to be able to access gas supply. But these are some of the things to think about. And then when you're thinking about an air permit, right, you need to be able to... uh, one of, one of the things there is uh, the, the country is governed by the Clean Air Act, mm-hmm. which governs criteria pollutants mm-hmm. under the National Ambient Air Quality Standards, right? Natural gas generates NOx emissions, which are a precursor to ozone. And if there are attainment areas, you're generally fine because in those areas, the criteria pollutant levels are fine and you can generally get permits relatively quickly. If you're in non-attainment areas, these are places where the criteria pollutant levels are such that they're trying not to make it worse, right? They're trying to make it better. So trying to get permits in these areas can be more complex. And that's a that's a more complicated process, can add time and cost to the whole, whole uh, uh, endeavor. So these are some important questions to think about. And, you know, obviously as people that do this, this yeah. is part of what we bring to the table is helping to think about all of these uh, components of the value chain and offering the entire solution together. Gilri, one of the things I love most about my position is that I get to talk to a lot of people and I get to learn a lot. Um, I think I probably got educated more in the last 10 minutes than I have in the last two days. Thank you okay. so much. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah. I really appreciate the time. Thanks a lot. Hope everyone has a great rest of the day at JS. Uh, at the, at the, at the conference. DCD Connect yeah. in New York City. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Gori. Thank you. Thank you. And thank care. you, viewers, for watching JSA TV. We'll see you soon.